Good evening and welcome to the Howard Chapel Missionary Baptist Church Bible Study tonight. As you can see, I am not in the sanctuary tonight, but we are still going to have Bible study tonight. We are located at 1715th East Market Street, New Albany, Indiana, but we are on remote access today. Um, but we want to continue with our Bible study today. So we're going to... Uh, open up with a word of prayer and get right into our lesson today. I want to thank everyone for calling in or tuning in for your Bible study tonight. We want to continue with Romans 11 tonight. Uh, we've been going through the series. Uh, last week we did 10 and then we we'll go all the way through chapter 16. So continue to thank you for tonight. So let's open up with a word of prayer to our God. Father God in heaven, as we come, we thank you, O oh God, for this day. We thank you for your blessings, O oh Father God. We thank you for as we continue through Romans, O oh Father God, that you'd increase our knowledge, O oh Father God, that we would more be draw closer to you, knowing that the closer we get to you, the devil has to flee. We pray, O oh Father God, that you watch over this lesson, O oh Father God, that we embark in our hearts and our minds, O oh Father God, that when we leave from here today, we we'll leave better than the way that we came. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. So we're going to go ahead and um, get started with the lesson today, Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Uh, I'm going to start off with the first verse. Let's see. Get it right there. And uh, it talks about how uh, Paul begins this lesson. We must understand that when Paul is writing this letter to to the Romans, Paul devoted all of Romans 11 to present proof that, that God is not through with Israel. God is not through with Israel. This is what Paul is saying. And he opened this chapter with questions that he knew his readers would want to pose. And it does not mean that God has rejected his people, Israel, but there's God, he's going to give some proof. And so he opens up to let him know that God has not rejected his people. And we must notice how Paul himself is an Israelite and he will use himself as an example. So as we look at the very first verse of, of this text, it says, I say then, has God cast away his people, God forbid, for I also am an Israelite in a seed of Abraham and from the tribe of Benjamin. This is what Paul is saying. Despite Israel had been disobedient, God has not rejected his people. God had forbid is the strongest form of neglect in Greek word that if God forbid, I mean, God has not done. So God has not, is not done. Paul and is very proud that he is in the physical house of Israel as well as in the spiritual house of Israel. But he also sees that God never completely gives up his physical house of Israel, even though they had walked away. And that's good news for us today because in time, we know how many times people will come into the church and then walk away to the church. But some people may give up on but God never gives up on people. So that's an encouraging word for somebody today. That God is long suffering and always ready to forgive and then receive people back. And we must have that same mentality this day that when people leave or when people stumble, when people fall, when people backslide, that we must have the same mentality that we must learn to forgive and we must learn to receive them back. Just last week, we received one of our members back to the church of God. And that's what it's all about getting people back to where they want to be, getting people back to their walk with Christ, getting people 
people back to walking with faith, giving people back to a closer relationship with Christ. Because if truth be told, all of us have stumbled a little bit. All of us have took some back steps. But by the grace of God, even in disobedience, God has rejected his people. And this is what Paul is letting the people of Israel know. And this is what the lesson, a lot of the lesson is going to be about this, this afternoon. So then Paul, after verse 1, he goes on to the next verse in verse 2. Paul says, Paul says, God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What not ye not, the scripture said of Elijah, how he made intercession to God against Israel. This scripture is speaking of God withholding the autumn and the spring rain and the summer dew, which was necessary for the crops. The Lord had threatened to withhold these things from the land. And then his people turned from him to serve other gods. When people didn't get their way, they, they they went on to another God. When people didn't get the things that they wanted, they went to another God. So Elijah had prayed for a drought, and God answered him. And the drought lasted three years and six months. You'll find it in James 5 and 6. But the drought proved that the God they went to, Baal, their gods of the rains and the God of fraternity, was impotent before God because even though there was a God of rain, he could not make it rain because God controls all things. And so what Paul is doing in this text, he's using Elijah for an example to let them know that there is only one true God. There is only one true God. So Paul used an example of them that God does not cast out the people. He said, I myself is an Israelite. I'm a descendant of Abraham, the tribe of Benjamin. I know what God can do. And these people of Israel have turned their way. And while they turned their way, guess what? A replacement theology began. And so these Jews that had walked away, these Gentiles that started getting the word. So then the Gentiles started believing and started believing in God. So these Jews started going to get their own God and started uh, 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 worshiping Baal, but Baal could not uh, overdo what God had already uh, commanded, that there that there would be no, there would be a drought. And so here in this text, Paul is reminding them that there is only one true God. So in this gospel that he is, is preaching, this is what he is saying. But he is saying that Paul points himself as an example of those who cast away because of many of us, we know Paul's story. Paul was one that persecuted the church. Paul was one that did not like Christian, but Paul had turned away. Even though in the midst of all the wrong that he's doing, God had not cast away. And this is what he is trying to let the people know. Even though you had turned from God, God has not turned from his people. And so he points and uses Elijah. And through he and Elijah was at a point in his life, he thought the same thing. Thing, uh, uh, that the people were thinking that he was all alone, that there, everybody had rejected God and nobody was listening to the word of God and nobody was doing what thus said the Lord. But then God went and allowed them and told him, he said, no, there's 7,000 who have, who have now built that did not bow down to Baal. You are not alone. And I stopped by to let somebody know today, you are not alone. Don't ever think that you're in this thing all by yourself. So Paul reminded them that God respond just like he did to Elijah and told him there were 7,000 people that uh, did not bow down to Baal. And it reminds us that Elijah's ministry was still moving forward. We know we get frustrated. We get discouraged sometimes. We feel like our effort is not going. We might be in a ministry. We might be a chairperson of a ministry. And it seems like it's not moving. And it seems like it's not going. And it seems like things are not working. And it's the same as Elijah. He just like, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to church. I'm preaching the word of God. But it, I, I got enemies against me. He's bound against the evil king Ahab and his murderous wife Jezebel. They're all trying to miss with him. And then they got the dismay of the people going to idol gods. And he said, God, it just feels like I'm all alone. Have you ever felt like you're just all alone? feel like nobody is with you. You're in this ministry all by yourself. You're doing this walk of faith all by yourself. But God stopped by to let you know that no, he is still keeping you. In the word, the verb kept emphasize that God's actions active. That means he's actively keeping us. That means he said, I found, I received, but the Lord said, I have kept you. Just like he had kept Israel, God will keep you in the midst of what you're going through. God is still working his mercies over, over you. God is still moving in your life. So the nation of Israel had to be found, even though they was not righteous, they still had a righteous God. And righteous righteousness comes by being faithful to God. And for these people who had rejected him, God was still faithful. And as we talked about earlier, he did not cast them away, but he held some stuff back. So 
This is what the text is trying to explain to us today in Romans chapter 11, that God will move in our lives if we just continue to be faithful. Let's look at a little bit more of the text here. Look at a little bit more of the text. He says in Romans 11, 5, he said, Even so then, the present time also, there is a rampant according to the election of grace. And if grace then is no more of work, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if work then is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. Read that again. It's kind of confusion. It says, and by if by grace then, no more of work. So if you got grace, you don't have work. Or otherwise, grace is no more grace if grace is considered work and it's no more work more grace other than work is what are you going to have work are you going to have grace grace versus work grace is the meaning of favor of kindness a closely related means a free gift for gift of god a truly gift it is unmerited it is unearned you cannot get it you can't work for it and once you mix work into grace it is no longer fully grace it is no longer mer unmerited it is being involved with work so israel does not deserve Serve God continuous favor because they was not doing what thus said the Lord. They was not accepting it. So this is when the Gentiles came with. And like all of us, we have been chosen by God. But it is been, it is a gift. We have been given a gift by God that we are that we are chosen that you can become a child of God. And Paul is affirming this in a special place that God has a plan for all of us. He asks the Lord and the nation that they should not stumble, that they should not fall. And Paul is comparing the mistakes of Israel to some of the things that people do make mistakes today that in our transgression, we try to turn away from God. We start, And then sometimes within the church, we say, well, I'm doing this work and I'm doing this work. Sometimes, sometimes you do more work of the church than you're not doing church work. And the transgression that that causes us that you you're missing out on the unmerited favor that God have God favor God blessings upon each and every one of us it's not because of the work but it's because of our belief it's because of our trust in him it's because of we believe in Jesus it's because we be we believe that he's coming back again and this is what the whole thing of Israel's rejection was of Christ is that many of them thought that they were supposed to have this they were entitled to this and yet they were God's people but God's people turned from God so God allowed to open up and then the Gentiles came in and just like brothers and sisters don't ever get it messed up to think that your work and church can't be replaced God is building up people to replace each and every one of us the church is going to be there when we're long gone he compared that generation and, and, and our generation, that there's going to be another generation. So while we're here, we must do what we can while we can, as for as long as we can, and as faithful as we can. But don't think that work that we're doing is because of us, but it's because of God's grace and because God has allowed his grace to be upon each and every one of us. So don't ever think that um, your work cannot be replaced Um uh, in, within the within the church body, then then Paul moves on to to another um, another section, and he talks about Paul emphasized that it is by God's undeserved, unmerited fervor that we can overcome rejection. All of us have had some rejection. You may have had rejection because you had brought something to the church and it didn't work out. You might have wanted to do something and it didn't get to be done. But your rejection does not stop your action, does not stop your walk with Christ, does not stop your belief in Christ. Because your action, it brings them on elevation, expectation to a celebration of your faith in Christ, that your grace be God. So don't be, have no deception in there. We see that from, we, we see from this that we cannot work our way into heaven. Salvation is a free gift. Truly, even the Holy Spirit must woo you into the desires to come to Jesus. Would we'll never be there. Our part in all of this is to reach out and take what God has offered us, what God has given our natural ability, and truly we have nothing to do with it. It's only by the grace of God. For 1 Corinthians 15 and 10 says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And it's his grace which bestows upon me and was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than them all, yet I am but a 
but the grace of God which is within me. And that ought to shout somebody tonight because it is by his grace that you're allowed to do what you can. It is by his grace that you have what you have. All the blessings that you have from them, it is a gift from God. He said, all every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. This is what he is talking about. Every good and perfect gift we have, all of it comes from the Lord. So we must not take out what we work, uh, think that we've done it. And then in verse 7, he says, but what then Israel have not obtained that which is secret, but the election of obtained it and the rest were bounded. In spite of their intense religious zeal, the Jews of Paul's day had failed to obtain God righteousness, the elect of whom the God glorious had chosen to turn salt foul. They fell from his righteousness because they failed to do what thus said the Lord. That's why it's so important that all of us continue to do what we can as long as we can. Then Paul, and then the next uh, part, uh, let's see, here we go. This next uh, video, he says, he says, through the Jews' rejection, the gospel salvation has come to the Gentiles. So because of their, 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 their falling away, their casting away, that the Gentiles have now the riches of God's first extended to the Jews after their rejection, the gospel was sent to the Gentiles. That's one thing we must understand. The gospel is going to go forward. If you don't go to church, guess what? The gospel is going to go to church. If you don't join a ministry, the ministry is still going to go. God's word, word is going to go forth, and it will not come back void. So it's important that you get off our high horse and think that we're doing the works that all of it is God's salvation. God's salvation has come to the Gentiles because the Jews did not want to follow it. And if you feel that you can't do, you don't want to do it, guess what? God going to have somebody else to do it. So to revoke the Jews the same to them that they might be saved. So some came, some people came to Christ and some of them got saved because some rejected Christ. And likewise, brothers and sisters, if, if, this just the church doors are going to stay open. If I'm not there, guess what? They'll have another preacher there the next week. Somebody must understand that none of us are too are that big that God cannot replace us. And this is what Paul is saying to them and saying to us on this day. And then he said on the on this next verse, he says, Though the Jews' rejection of the gospel of salvation has come to Gentile, the riches they revoked it all. And then here we go to the um let me pull up this next slide here. The difference between the two. This is the difference. The Jews and the Romans had clashed over riches over uh, religious and politic ideas, the, the religious reason, the Romans worshipped many gods, whereas the Jews had only one God. Some Romans thought that the Jews were insulting their God by worshipping only one God. But the political reason these Jews rebelled against Roman rule twice were defeated, empire hardened, banned that the practice of some rituals of the hope of the ending dire of independence. The Jews rebelled again, so hardened, destroyed Jerusalem, and forced the Jews out after the Romans had built over it. So there was a clash between these Jews and these Romans, and now the, many of them had turned away and wanted to to walk away but because of God's grace and God's mercy God allowed that door to stay open for them and brothers and sisters the door is open for each and every one of us the door is open it said according according as it is written God has given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear until this day these scriptures leave no doubt that God first called us and the Holy Spirit has to reveal to us in this meaning and we too would be blinded if it is God that opened our ears and understanding to his word. Remember, you can you can be hearing, you can be listening and not hearing the word of God. It is our source that we must depend on, that Holy Spirit. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of God, the fear of the reference of him, the hold of him in awe. Unless God revealed himself to us, we do not truly know know him he loves every one of us and wants us all to love him but if we choose not to follow him if we choose not to worship him if we choose not to give him he will stop up our ears and our eyes we will not be able to understand he does not want us to come to him with our mind and with with our mind but also he wants us to come with our heart and that's a, that's a, a very vital point right there god wants your heart to be right your heart to be right with him so it's very important that we all learn to worship him in spirit and in truth. 
So Paul begins to use it as like a, a tree, a tree that is rooted. He said, some branches are from the olive tree were broken and broken off because of unbelief. These were the Jews that walked away. They were broken off. Who have left in, in these wild branches of these olive trees by faith to partake of the blessings of the rooted, the promise of God gave to Abraham could be cut off. So he's saying, you, You've been rooted, you've been founded, you, you have that found foundation, but you have cast away, you've walked away, but now you're like a tree branch. You're, you're stretched out so far because you know, once a tree branch gets so far, they get away from the root. And many people have gotten away from the root of God. Remember, He is the true vine, so we have to stay close to him. I said it in the prayer. The closer we stay to him, the closer we the closer the, the, the more the devil will flee and the more that he will, will be drawn to him. It's sort of like if you had those old um uh, cordless phones, as long as you were close to the base, as long as you were close to the base, you got the signal. But if it got too far from the base, you lose the signal. And many people have lost their signal because they have walked away too far from the church. They have walked away from their prayer life. They have walked away from what they what thus said the Lord. So now they don't have a signal. They are not connected with God. And so this is very important for each and every one of us to stay connected, to stay part of the branch, to be part of the branch. Don't don't be broken off. Yeah, we're going to be, you may be stretched out, but you've got to stay close to the vine. You've got to stay close to the root of, of, of God's holy and righteous word. Then he says, then the, the next, the next uh, slide that we're going to go to as I try to hasten to a close here. It talks about uh, how God can, how can the Jews be saved? How, how once you've been cast away, how have you, when you've fallen from the branch, when you said, for the gift of God, uh, the gift and the calling of God are irrevocable, for you are once disobedient in God, yet have not obtained mercy through their disobedience. Even so, these also have now been disobedient, that through the mercy shown by they also may obtain mercy. For God has committed them to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. And this right here is God it has mercy on each and every one of us. We all are, all of us are only here because of God's, uh, God's mercy. We, God's mercy has allowed us to be where we at. It is God's mercy, you know, even though we've been disobedient, even though these is, is, uh, these Jews were disobedient. God still wants us to draw closer to Him, even though they have been disobedient. God still shows mercy, and I believe that's a message for somebody today. You might have been disobedient, but God still showed mercy. You might have done something wrong, but God still showed mercy. You might have fell off, but God still showed mercy. We are all uh, just a grace case because of God's grace and God's mercy. So what he is saying to them and what he is saying to us, all of us must continue on being in his word and thanking God for his mercy. And then Paul closes out this, this text. He said, oh, the depth. This is not the doxology. He said, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways and past findings. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who have become the, his counselor, and, and who has first given to him, and who has shall be repaid of him? For it is him through him, and to him after all things, and to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. It's to him, brothers and sisters. We can't make it without God. We are saved by God. We want to be in our hearts. We need to have him in our minds. We need to be, let him be our counselor. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the prince of peace. He is the mighty God. And we must know that it is in him. It has already been paid on a hill called Calvary. For him we live. For him we move. It's for him we're in our being. And this is something forever and forever. And then he was wondering, like, how can these people be? How can we change? How can we get ourselves together? Paul ended us with some questions that we also 
We also must know, and these are the questions that he is asking them and asking us, that God's only means of providing justification for the Jews and the Gentiles is the same question that we ask. Have you heard the word of God? Do you believe in the word of God? Do you believe that his name is Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection, he's coming back? Have you confessed that Jesus before man, before, and are you, and have you obeyed God? We talked about that last week. Did have you repented and been baptized in the name? of Christ. That's how you stay in the in, in, in God's grace. That's how you stay in God's favor. That's how you stay in God's word. So well, tonight, as we close out tonight, Romans 11 is all about not being cast away, not being fallen out. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Remember, none of us are too big that God cannot bring us down. None of us can work our way into heaven. We must continue to trust in God. We must continue to believe in God. Because if it has had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? It's all about giving God this, giving God the praise that He is worthy of. And this is what Paul is saying. His Jews thought they were entitled to stuff. And sometimes people get to the point that you're entitled to nothing. Everything that we have is only because of the grace of God. All of it is because of the grace that God has given to us, and it's because of his mercy. So on tonight, as we close out tonight, remember and trust in the Lord and believe in him and re each and every one of our lives, if we believe in him, if we trust in him, if we continue to call on his holy and righteous name, something will begin to happen. Something will begin to transpire in your life. Just like they do, they have fallen away. All of us slip up, all of us Are fall, but, but we must also traits? understand and know created a tool that, allows you to compare that God to is able to world. keep us in the midst of all that we're going through. So tonight, I pray that something was said or something was done that you would draw yourself closer to God. You would realize that we cannot work our way in, but we ought to give God the grace and give God the glory. Let us pray out. Family Father, as we come to this evening, we thank you, O oh God, for your word. We thank you, O oh God, for all your many blessings. We thank you, God, that you've been so good to each and every one of us. God, you have been so awesome. Lord, we realize that, Father God, order our steps. Let us work of the church, oh, Father God, and let us continue to be the children of God you would want us to be. We know that you're sending Jesus back for us, and we want to be a church without blemish. We want to be a children of God that continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, watch over us, oh, Father God, and we'll continue to give you the praise, continue to give you the honor, and continue to give the glory. In Jesus' holy and righteous name, and all the people of God said, Amen. Welcome to the Howard Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, a Bible-believing church where preaching is central, where Christian doctrine is promoted and taught, where believers' baptism is practiced, where the Bible is taught as the living word, where Jesus is preached and taught as Lord of the church. 1715 East Market Street, New Albany, Indiana.